Six million Jewish men, women, and children perished during the World War II Nazi Holocaust, but many others survived. Holocaust survivors who survived did so because some righteous Gentile put his life on the line to save another human being. The adult survivors are mostly all gone now. The Holocaust survivors still living in Israel were teenagers and children when the rest of the family was taken from them. They are now elderly, many poor, and in need of loving hearts, reaching out to them yet again with love and compassion. How can you help? By donating to Israel Food Outreach. As IFO ships dried soup mix and handmade quilts to Israel's Holocaust survivors, over 150,000 still alive in Israel. You can help in two ways. One, by contributing to the cost of shipping huge containers of dried soup mix to Israel. And two, by making handmade quilts to be given to the Holocaust survivors. Families are making the quilts. Church groups are making them. Children in church school are making them. And you can too. To get involved, contact us using the information at the end of this video clip. From the east unto the west, from the south unto the north, from the summit and the crest, our thanksgiving is poured forth. From the east unto the west, This family of four children, their grandmother visited Gleanings last April and she was telling them about quilt making and they wanted to get involved. So each one of the children and their mother made quilts and this little girl is Ashley, age four, and it says that she helped to lay out the squares and did some of the foot pedal for her quilt. And then her brother Jason, age six, selected the squares and sewed by using the foot pedal while mom quilted the fabric. And then the littlest one, the little girl here, is Katrina, age 22 months. She moved the fabric squares around on the floor, and that's her quilt. And then um, Camille, the oldest, age nine, she sewed the quilt herself. And we have the finished quilt tops in a box, and we're gonna put them together with the backings, and then we're gonna send them the pictures, the finished pictures of the quilts. When the four children in this one family went to school, their Gateway Christian School in Paulsbo, the rest of the, um, the classes, grades kindergarten through five, grades five, decided they each wanted to make a quilt top. Each class made their own quilt, and they sent their quilt tops to us to finish. But Norman, it's just great to be with you in your quilt room here at Gleanings for the Hungry. And I know you've got several ladies here are working. Uh, you still have a goal of 100 or so. How many quilts are you you're thinking of before the next shipment here? Um, I hope 100. That's what we did last summer. Uh, okay, okay. And uh, then you're getting quilts from other organizations yes. that are making them? Yeah, we just got three boxes from Portland. Uh -huh. And we get a few now and then from different areas. Mm -hmm. We get tops, we get a lot of tops that come in that we can put together. Uh -huh. And we get, um, we get squares, cut, a lot of cut squares that we can work with. Uh -huh. yeah. And those that are doing this are doing it by following your 23 minutes step by step on how to do it. So there's consistency. Yes in everything, mm -hmm. including the, the batting, 12 yep. ounce batting, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And they have a they, they have a heart for um, making clothes for the Holocaust survivors. Uh -huh. There's a lot of them have seen the, the video and they've also went on to the um, Israel Food Outreach uh, website and looked at the other videos too. So oh, they did? Uh -huh. So they, it doesn't just stop at the instructional video. Yeah. yeah. So. What would you say to those ladies who might be thinking in terms of doing it, or maybe just seeing it and having thought? of making quilts for Israel. What would 
what would be your suggestion to them? Why should they even be doing, considering doing this? Well, I, I can't think of um, any more important reason to do it than just that um, to just show their, it's a good way to show their love. Because when the food goes out to the people over there, the food is gone, but the, the quilt is given with the food. The quilts, the love of the quilt stays. They always have that. The food might be gone in a week or two, but the love of the quilt is still there. Mm -hmm. And when the quilt is given to them, they know that somebody in America loves them. Mm -hmm. Christians love them, and that stays with them. And is that the way you feel yeah. yourself? Absolutely. Is that the reason you're doing it? Absolutely. And it's also, um, if you think about a blanket, when you're a child, and from the time you're a small child, when you're wrapped in a blanket, I mean, a blanket is just a symbol of love all, all through your life. A blanket mm -hmm. is a symbol of love. Here's mm -hmm. a you know, when somebody gives you something like that, especially mm -hmm. something they've made, mm -hmm. you know, it's a symbol of love, and mm -hmm. it's going to stay with them mm -hmm. long after the food's gone. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, it's something that's beautiful that has all those different colors and the different things that might remind them of something wonderful. It's just, you know, mm -hmm. it stimulates their, their mind and their, their thoughts on just wonderful things. And what restrictions are there as to the people that can work on the quilt? None. 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 If you can tie a knot, you can work on the quilt. If you can tie a knot. If you can't stand up, if you can't... We've even had a blind lady come and work on the quilt and tie exactly. knots. Yes, absolutely. Children come and they tie knots. They, <laughs> children can do anything. They can stick the fabric on the wall. There's no restrictions. <laughs> Unless you're restricted by your own mind, you're, you know, yeah. you're not restricted. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Right? Uh, I mean, we, we appreciate so much what you're doing as it gleanings with the quilts, and we realize that you can't do it all by any means. There's 170,000 Hill Holocaust survivors in Israel, 30%, which is 50,000 50, people below the poverty level, so that's those that are trying to get the quilts to. So gleanings can't possibly do that, you know. So it's got to be others involved. So, what would you say to some of those others? Um, what, what kind of, um, what advice would you give some of those others with, with that need in mind? Well, I think if everybody just, um, that, that has the, the, the desire to do it, if everybody does it, you know, just a little bit, mm -hmm. a little part, then um, it can be done. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do a whole bunch. You don't have to do 500 in a, in a year like we do. You could do, like the group that sends from Portland, they send us 20 or 30 every couple months, you know? Mm -hmm. Or if you send us a box of tops, like the school children in Burlington, you know? Mm -hmm. Or a box of squares that we can make 30 quilts out of. Whatever, whatever part we can do is, is important. Because yeah. <laughs> those are blessed yeah. Israel. Blessed. Yeah, right, right, yeah. Be blessed. Yeah. Norma, thanks so much. God bless you and, and the ladies, everybody working on the this endeavor to bless Israel, the Holocaust survivors, you've given so much. So I thank you, God bless you, and you feel blessed by this. Absolutely. Yes. And, and you you give the assurance to everyone that would participate from whatever church or synagogue that you receive the same blessing as you receive mm -hmm. in your people here. Thank you. Or the people much. that do it in their own homes or uh -huh. their schools. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thanks so much, Norman. Sure. <laughs> what Israel requires, and so these specific labels have the exact ingredients of everything on it, um, and so they they list everything so everybody, so they know it's kosher, they have the, the date, uh, it's made, the date it's, um, it's done, the weight, all the specifics that they might need for any anything through customs, any shipping manifest, stuff like that, uh, but the difference is um, we have to manually put these on by hand, uh, mm -hmm. so it's a little extra work, uh, that's what these good folks are doing here, so they get a stack of these gallon Ziploc bags, uh, and then as you can see, they, they put, peel the label off and put it right on the center of the bag. Uh, so, when, so when they're full, uh, the, the label's right on there. It's very easy to see. Uh, and thus far, you know, with these, with the label here in both English and in Hebrew, we've had no problems at all. Uh, and we're very, 
very thankful for uh, well for the volunteer support and for all the yeah, I mean all the stuff that goes into it. It's very labor intensive, but it's very very well worth it. Um, and yeah, at the end of the day, we get that call that the food's gone in and everything's everything's good. Uh, so that's in essence what we what we do here. God says he's unchanging, so if he's the same God as in as he is now, I think that there's still, he still has a special call to the people of Israel. Um, I mean, they were the first people he went to to hear the gospel. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, so there's, there's like to identify with Christ is to help the Israel people, if that makes sense. And identifying with Christ as he went, and he... He did all, all his ministry with the with the, the Jews, uh, and that was, you know, that was his focus. And you know, then we, we spread out. I've heard it said that there are two types of people in the world: There's the missionary and the mission field. And it doesn't really matter what your profession is. There is a call on your life to spread the gospel. We're here for a purpose. Um, and, and I mean, if you look in Acts, there I mean, the church is so focused. Um, on doing good works and giving God the glory, doing miracles and outpouring everything that's given to them. Mm -hmm. I mean, in everything. When it comes to to Israel, we can't forget where we came from. I mean, the whole Christian faith came from the Jews. Jesus came to the Jews, and that was his ministry was to them. And then he came to fulfill the law. And there's, as a Christian body, uh, we have a call to pray, and we have a call to, to give to them and to help the needy, help the poor. And and, and that that covers, you know, that covers your own your own backyard. You know, James says the true religion is this: to help the orphans and widows in their affliction, and to keep yourself unstained from the world. And that is. Uh, and there you go. Mm, if you yeah. count yourself religious, look after the widows and orphans. Right. Roy, thank you very much for your time talking to us here. Appreciate it. God bless you. And Glenn. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you guys. Too. <laughs> you guys are right. Take care. Well.